What determines where we end up in the sense that, you know, from a, um, a reincarnational point of view, if you end up being lucky enough to live in Australia, then it's obviously, you know, you've done well in the past and, and somehow you've earned, earned the right to incarnate into somewhere nice like where we are here. No. But if that doesn't apply, I mean, how did we get... I mean, I was over in India recently and it's, it's not that great over there. Mm -hmm. And we live in paradise here. How, how did we get so lucky? Um, there's a lot of factors at work about the law of attraction. Um, when you get to the state where in the 20 seconds for your state, you can actually see the law of attraction at work in every single case of incarnation. Because you actually see the personality of the soul incarnating as well. And what's happened is that groups of souls, if you like, which have a, a natural affinity in the spirit world before they incarnate, they're not conscious of that affinity, but they are similar in personality and that causes an attraction. You follow me? So, no. So they've already been, so God has already created this soul, but he, it hasn't decided to incarnate. That's right, and it's not conscious of itself at this point. Are they like eggs that haven't hatched? They're like eggs that haven't hatched, but they have personality. Okay, and do they gather together? And they gather together in groups. What do they do? <laughs> as far as I'm aware, there's yeah. continual creation. So they gather together, and what do they just hang out like grapes? Well, they're not conscious of it. <laughs> 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 Can you define personality? Because that, that fascinates me. The, the knowing that God created these souls with personality, what does it mean? Have you watched the, the first CD, the DVD? Yes. Because I've defined it in there. Oh, okay. but, but just to revise it, it's the, the condition is personality is to do with what God has given you as a part of your natural state. Could that be mediumistic? Is it a quality or a personality? Yeah, well, it, um, Your character. Every, per, every personality, quality or character can be modified by you through your experience. Okay. So in other words, I might be born without uh, any artistic ability whatsoever. Mm. But there's other people that are just born automatically with an artistic ability. Mm. Why is that? Well, it's because they have a dominant thing in their mm. soul mm. which causes them to feel more artistic within themselves. Mm. And that is part of their personality. Does that make sense? And they can then develop that or suppress that. That's the call. You all have totally unique abilities and totally unique things going, personality traits inside of you that I don't have and I will never have. I can develop them. I can notice them in you and say, I like that. I want to give that a go. But... I will never have it to your ability. Mm -hmm. And there are some things inside of you that you'll never have to mine as well. It's because we're all unique. God created us in this way. Because of this uniqueness, you, and I would call that personality. Right? Personality which is really millions and millions of traits that are built inside of you that are different to the next person that's sitting next to you. Right? And you have the ability to suppress them or develop them, mm. any one of them, or the majority of them, just depends on how, how you feel. It takes as long as it takes. Now that's personality. Individuality is totally different. What individuality is, is the ability to know yourself, to be conscious or self-conscious, self-aware. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. At the moment of your birth, if you could call it that, as a soul, you were not conscious or aware of your own personality. You had no conscious awareness of who you are. And it's the process of incarnation, which is the separation of the soul into its two halves, that creates the awareness. So incarnation is an important process in you becoming self-aware. And that's why God created that process. And the beauty of the earth environment is it is a pristine environment, even though you may not think so. It's a pristine environment for helping you become self-aware. Now, how long do you spend um, <coughs> floating around? Well, there's souls that have spent billions of years there. That uh, never, never came into a body. Not yet. They will. But, obviously, they're not aware they've spent billions of years of our time there. 
And what's time anyway? And what's time anyway? They haven't got a choice though. Sorry? They haven't got a choice. They will eventually incarnate. Okay. But they will be chosen by parents. They will all be chosen by parents. So exactly. how do we end up being here on the Sunshine Coast? Well, your parents <laughs> chose your personal personality and your soul, obviously. And then the law of attraction is at work after that point. Well, at, at that point, the law of attraction is at work. So too. it's a soul choosing, isn't it? The, whatever the Not the intellect. Yeah. So the, the emotions in the soul. So the mother choosing. has certain personality traits. And the father the has soul. certain personality traits. They both have certain emotional set and conditions within themselves. And, attract and that attracts a certain soul with certain personality traits in the spirit, in the soul world, that is yet to incarnate. So is that why Indians end up having Indians? Um, <laughs> from God's perspective, there's no such thing as an Indian soul or an Australian soul or an American, American soul or any of those kind of things. But there are certain personality traits that obviously are affected by those attractions. Genetics. AJ, hey, why did you um, incarnate in Australia? And because it was the place that was going to be the fastest possible place to develop people spiritually on the divine love path. How come? Because of the nature of our, of our country. Um, the nature of our country is that we have very little um, superiority issues. Mm -hmm. you know, most of us feel equal with everyone else generally. Uh, we also have a very loose viewpoint of religion. Mm -hmm. right? So it's very, we're very free in those two, two aspects. And we also have the ability in Australia to allow to be allowed to feel our own emotions generally a lot more than many other Western nations. Even men, because Australian men don't feel them. <laughs> 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 Who have you been attracted to? <laughs> Okay, now you're talking. <laughs> That's the reason why you've been attracting. I've been a 65-year-old man, two and a half years ago. He's really into feeling emotions. Yeah, good. Yeah. 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 Pretty hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's to do with the law of attraction yeah. that you feel that. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, in answer to your question, though, completely, is that um, we chose a number of different locations around that. There's 14 people who initially chose to reincarnate. And we chose a number of different places around the earth because those places were going to be the first places that we felt, or the places that were going to be the f uh, places that would be more important in the beginning to actually develop get you know, going. And, and get going in terms of a spiritual sense. So um, six of the 14 incarnated into Australia. Mm -hmm. And then there's uh, two in Canada. There's two who incarnated into South America but are now living in Barbados. And there's two in South Africa. Um, and there's two who are Vietnamese. And they'll be world teachers? Um, well, they'll be what they choose, whatever that is, because their free will is still operational. Many of them are having a lot of difficulty with dealing with their emotions, <clears throat> because not only do they have the average emotions that you have to deal with, but they also have some major identity issues to deal with as well. And that's causing them a lot of internal stress, which, which is difficult for them to cope with. So at the moment, about seven or eight of the 14, are dealing with their emotions consistently and they understand what's going on. And the other six of the 14, one of them has died already, and uh, was murdered, and then five of the other five are just finding a struggle to deal with their different emotions, although a number of them are aware of who they are. Mm. So, in the end of whether they'll be world teachers or not, many of you will be world teachers before they will be, probably. Hey AJ, getting back to the soul and the attraction of children, um, you were saying at one of the meetings here where the, uh, the lady said she didn't know, didn't have any feelings of love, but God, uh, well, her, the law of attraction was she attracted young children, her babies were very loving. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that meeting? Yeah, but... So is that a... That same lady... Is that a... I, re I know the lady. Yeah. And the same lady believes she doesn't have any feelings of love, and that in her soul it's quite different. It's her injuries. Yeah, so uh, what she was... And this is the thing you, many of you will need to remember in statements that are made by other people to you is that many times they're saying it as if they believe it to be the truth. Mm, mm. But in reality, it is an actual emotional error where they're judging themselves. Yeah, okay. right? And if you accept that judgment rather than understanding their, and the feelings that are coming from them, mm. then you'll mm. often feel there's a disharmony. Mm. Remember that everything from a celestial point of view is governed by the emotional attractions. And all of those attractions are based on truth and love. 
And so from a celestial point of view, you can see the attractions very easily and why different people have attracted different things. Okay. Yeah. Not so easy here on Earth looking at it. Uh, I've forgotten individuality, the ability to... A to be self-aware. Self <coughs> yeah. so, so getting back to the individuality discussion, there's a difference between personality and individuality. Individuality is you have become self-aware. You now know you are an individual. You now know you can think, feel, taste, do whatever you wish to do, choose to do, and you have the right to do that. You've been given the free will to do that. You're now even aware that you have free will, perhaps. That you have the will to make choices and decisions. That's what I call individuality. Sounds like a two-year-old. <laughs> From the moment we incarnate, we're an individual. From the moment we incarnate into the womb, we're an individual. Right? We're aware, we're self-aware. And if I pass in that state, so if I pass and I've been miscarried, I am still, in, I've, I, the process of incarnation has been completed. Because I am self-aware. Before the time of incarnation, I was not self-aware. Right? And I'm talking the first incarnation. Right? That is a totally different state to personality. Personality is traits that God designed inside of you, which are unique to you and no one else has, or that are similar to what other people have. It's just a combination of those things inside of your soul. And that personality existed before you were aware of it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I call personality. Mm -hmm. There's a sense of you coming to that? Of course, all, all sorts of things come into that. Although a lot of, be careful with a lot of qualities nowadays that we judge in people. Because with a lot of qualities what we do is we judge that quality as good or that quality as bad. In reality, a lot of our qualities that we think are qualities are actually just injuries. Mm -hmm. all right? So you know how there's a lot of books nowadays that say, oh, you're that type of person, or you're this mm. type of person. This one that goes uh, choleric. Oh, okay. uh, Flemic. Flematic. Yeah. What's it called? The Myers-Briggs personality classification. That's it, that's it, yeah. <coughs> when you think about it, the majority of it is based on injury. The pers a person who's constantly <laughs> upset and angry and projecting that on others, I don't call that a personality. I call that emotional <laughs> injury. Because mm. right? in the end, all of you, once you're at one with God, you won't do that. Mm. Mm. So it must be an injury. Mm. Right? We just think it's a part of our personality, but it's not. It's not a part of our personality. It's an emotional injury that we gathered through the course of our life from the moment of incarnation onwards. So is that something that can determine, like, our, like if we can define ourselves within that, is that something that can be a guide to us to show us that we're... These are our emotions that, that need to be picked up. Yeah, if we start define, if you've defined yourself as like an angry type of person, or a, or a get up and go type of person, or a person <laughs> that never wants to sit down, or a person that you know all these different things, the truth is that majority of those definitions are actually injury based. <clears throat> they're not. They're not personality. Yep. Personality is totally different to that. Serene feeling. Right. With the I Ching as well. Sorry. With the I Ching as well. I don't the profile's based on the IQ. Oh, anything that profiles you, you mm. anything that profiles you generally does not allow for your expression of free will. In other words, it doesn't allow you to change who you are. And God gave you free will, so therefore God gave you the ability to also change who you are. Like the zodiac. Right? You're this sort of person. Yeah. <laughs> the zodiac is a similar thing. So all of those things, while there are certain truths of attraction of certain personalities mm. at certain times of the year and so forth, there are certain universal features of function that, that cause certain attractions. None of them define you. Right? You are defined by the emotions that exist in your soul and the personality mixed with the personality that God gave you. So have we made up these, these immense systems of, like, you know, like the zodiac and you know, all the, the Maya Greeks, and just yep. to occupy ourselves or entertain <laughs> ourselves or something? Yeah, to create our realities. Remember in the channeling, if you if you see the DVDs from uh, January, in the channeling with Lucinda, remember what she said about Six Fear Spirits? Yeah. She said You're that they them. create huge sideway realities, yes. right? Mm -hmm that are beyond your intellectual comprehension right at the moment. 
billions and billions and billions of different realities are created in that location. And you move from one to the other as you think you're pro progressing. You're moving from one to another, to another, to another, to another, to another. They're never growing higher than that, but they're moving from one. And what's happened is many of their realities is filtered down through their connections with people on Earth onto what things we've constructed here on Earth. So things like the Zodiac, for instance, came from spirits. Right? All of those things came from spirits in order to, you know, to, as, a, as a reflection of the reality of what they believe is real. And, and imposed onto persons on the earth. 